Aptera was an established electric car maker, which never had much success with their early plans, but has roared back with a new attempt and with a new design it's taking orders for. The vehicle claims to be crazy efficient, and that's important. More of what some call a gimmick is the fact that it can be covered with solar panels. With this idea, it claims to make the car a never-charge vehicle. But an unpopular opinion might be that it probably isn't, and in fact, putting solar panels on the car is not at all a green thing to do. In this video, we will be taking a closer look at the Aptera, and most especially how green it actually is. Stay tuned to the end so you don't miss a single detail. Hi, this is Echo Electric, where we talk about all things concerning EVs. Remember to like the video. If you're enjoying our content, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to stay connected. Before we get into the video, I'd like to pass on a special message regarding one of our core team members here at Echo Electric. Lewin is a founding writer and editor here at Echo Electric. He is a sickler and has lost two siblings to this disease. Lewin has battled the dreaded sickle cell disease all his life, and his health keeps deteriorating as the days go by. Despite the severe, debilitating pain episodes, frequent hospitalization, and bed rest recommendations, Lewin still puts up with creating the unique content we put out here. Lewin is indeed a fighter, and the best we can do for him as a team is to help him stay healthy. Lewin's health can be completely restored with a bone marrow transplant and a bilateral hip replacement. So we call on all our audience and fans to donate and see that he gets these surgeries. We'll really wish that he stays healthy. We hope you'll want that too. Please check out his GoFundMe campaign in the description below. Let's start with everything good about the Aptera SEV. The sleek and aerodynamic three-wheel design results in an Aptera claim that the vehicle uses only 100 watt-hours to travel a mile. Compare that with the already very efficient Tesla Model 3, which takes 250 or larger electric vehicles that can take 300 and even 400 watt per hour to go that far. That's astonishingly efficient and will be an incredible achievement, though it comes with some compromises. With that efficiency, it means the car would have incredible range on the same batteries put in regular EV sedans. The Aptera claims 250 miles on the sort of small battery found in an older leaf and a version that can go almost 1,000 miles on a charge with a 100 kilowatt hour battery, as might be found in a Tesla Model X. That's actually a wasteful amount of range, since nobody is likely to drive more than 600 miles a day without tiring, though it opens the potential for road trips in remote locations not otherwise suitable for EVs. That much battery has another purpose we'll talk about below. To make this happen, the vehicle design is a two-seater with limited cargo room, no room for children or a third seat as of yet, but a small space suitable for a dog. But that's all all right, seeing as a lot of the car market is populated by customers that never actually use the back seat to carry people, though this would not compete in the family primary car market. The announced price of the Aptera SEV was mentioned to be a staggering $26,000 for a base model with 250 miles range to over $50,000 with 1,000 miles range. The full set of solar panels and a few key options is not out of range for EV buyers. Although there's a great possibility for price increases in the near future. For those that want to be green in their transportation, using 100 watt hour per mile is a big deal. To put it in contrast, the New York MTA subway uses about 160 watt-hour per passenger mile. Driving alone in this vehicle uses less energy than the most efficient transit systems in the world. Driving with two can be almost anything but electric scooters. All drivers of electric cars are making a vast improvement over their fossil cousins, but this will no doubt be the champion. The efficiency also means that the vehicle would recover miles faster when charging at the same rate as other cars. Aptera notes that at a 50 kilowatts DC fast charging station, that would allow the gain of 500 miles of range in an hour, though almost all systems slow down charging a lot when they get more than half full. Newer EVs can charge at 250 to 350 kilowatts and thus get the same rate. It is unknown if the Aptera pack will support that. This also means that charging from standard 120-volt plugs 
is much more reasonable, since that can add 130 or more miles in a typical night, enough for almost anybody. But now let's take a close look at the compromises of the Aptera SEV. Safety To get that efficiency and range, you will need to give up surprisingly few things. The vehicle is small and light, and Aptera claims it will pass all crash tests well, after the Delta version has been completed. That's good, though in a crash with a heavy vehicle, there is just some physics, which is going to put the passengers in a light vehicle at a disadvantage. Aptera's space. As noted, it's for two passengers plus maybe a dog. The 25 cubic feet of cargo room is actually quite good and beats a Tesla with the rear seats up, though loses to cars with the seats down. The Aptera claims similar acceleration to the Tesla and offers an off-road option which raises it up a bit. Aptera's solar panel efficiency. The never charge solar panel, with all the great specs above, Aptera promotes even more their solar charging feature. Every car comes with a basic panel that's roughly 300 watts on the roof. For $900, you can add panels to the hood and rear to raise it to 700 watts. Aptera promotes that in this full configuration, you can gain up to 48 miles a day of range with solar charging, or about 10,000 miles a year in San Francisco, or 7,500 a year in a place like Boston. Since the average driver only goes about 12,000 a year in a new car, many drivers, they suggest, could get all their miles from the sun and have a fully solar-powered car they never have to plug in. Many potential buyers find that very appealing. But it's much more complex than that for a couple of reasons. Let's talk about the limitations. These are ideal numbers, presuming the car is always parked all day in a spot with no shade, and the car never does long drives, and from the standpoint of reducing emissions, it is always better to put solar panels on your house or in a solar farm than it is to put them on your car. While the panels are not a green choice, they can be a convenient choice, especially for people who can't easily plug their car into charge. That is to say, people who don't own a parking spot at home where they can have charging and who don't have charging where they park during the day for work. For such people today, electric cars are not so practical as they must hunt down charging or waste time and money at fast chargers every so often. If you don't own your home or must park on the street and there's no charging at your commuter lot, the solar panel won't fully charge your car, but it will mean fewer inconvenient trips to do charging. With the longer range, owners might find themselves having to charge only every few weeks of short range driving, particularly in summer. Even people who do have charging at home may find they can skip plugging and unplugging on most days, which is a nice convenience. If you bought the overkill 1,000-mile car, you could charge that only every three weeks without the solar panels and possibly just every two months with them, if not taking long trips. This wouldn't work on a 250-watt-hour-per-mile car like the Tesla. There the panels wouldn't do much more than keep the battery topped up. At the moment, it's not yet been published how much power the Aptera uses while idle, but Teslas will lose a few miles of range each day, more if their sentry mode security system is on, which would consume all the panel's output. But is the Aptera SEV really green? Short answer, not quite. It may be convenient, though at $1,500 or $900 in options and an implied $600 cost for the non-optional panel, it's less clear if it's worth it. Many might feel justified because they like the idea of mostly driving using green solar power. But a car is not a very green place to mount a solar panel, however. If one has to consider the choice of spending $1,500 on panels for a car, or spending $1,500 on panels on your house, or investing the money in a solar farm that will install such panels there, the car is a terrible choice. Panels for a car must be designed to be robust in the automotive environment, with heat, wind, and lots of vibration. That makes you get less panel per dollar than house panels. In Aptera's video citing how much effort they put into research and development of their panels, in collaboration with Maxine Solar Technologies, they cited how difficult it was making a solar cell that could be robust enough to handle the effects of the world around it and all the elements making it to be that robust, while also making sure it could bend on two angles without breaking. 
The amount of effort, research, and development that went into the making of these solar panels was enormous and will no doubt be mirrored in the overall price of the vehicle. This proved to be such a great challenge which Aptera couldn't solve on their own, hence they needed the help of Maxian to be their partners in bringing this innovative technology to the Aptera. The simple truth is, cars are not going to be constantly parked in fully sunny spots. Indeed, unless you are confident you can always keep the car parked away from shade for most of the daylight hours, this is not a good option. This clearly defeats the purpose of having a garage, which most homes do. Other panels will be generally mounted in no-shade locations. If the car is garaged, the panels are wasted. If it's not garaged, its exterior will age slightly faster. Panels in a car are generally horizontal. That means they get about 30% less power than panels mounted tilted to the local latitude. In addition, the car may not be aimed the right way for best collection. Although we could see a basic self-driving vehicle in an open lot could reposition itself to track the sun, we do hope that's a feature the Aptera will someday add to its vehicles. But what about waste? Perhaps one of the worst aspects of a solar vehicle like Aptera that many clearly don't think to talk about is the fact that all or almost every person prefers to keep their EV batteries near full. When the battery is in this state, any solar power harvested after that is simply thrown away. Panels on the grid feed all their extra power to the grid to reduce the need for fossil fuel burning. A car could do that with a vehicle-to-grid connection, but such connections are rare, expensive, and only work if the car is plugged in all the time, defeating the convenience purpose above. After a states that in the Delta version of the vehicle, they will be implementing a V2G or vehicle-to-grid function which will be available in the future. How about the heat then? It's common sense that vehicles parked in the sun get hot and need to use some of that energy to power its air conditioning system, to bring those temperatures back down again to comfortable driving temperatures. That's probably only one to two miles worth of after a range, but if it happens several times a day, it's wasted compared to keeping the car cooler in the shade. Depending on your situation, it's not out of the question that spending the $1,500 on grid-tied panels would reduce greenhouse gas emissions two to three times as much as putting them on the car. Putting them on the car is simply for convenience and not to do the green thing. In many locations, you can also buy your electricity exclusively from renewable sources, which may be the most effective way to spend your money to reduce emissions. Overall, Aptera could more easily benefit from highlighting the vehicle's convenience aspects rather than its never-charge features. But here's another idea for those wanting to be green. Aptera could offer those who will be able to plug in at home the ability to buy solar farm shares for the same money as the panels and make the world a much greener place with their money. In fact, all other EV makers should consider the same thing. The reality is the panels on the Aptera are only going to provide the 40-mile maximum if you park the car in the sun in high summer. On dark or rainy days, or in winter, or in less sunny climates, it's only going to provide a mild boost of 10 to 15 miles, which isn't good enough for $1,500. While Aptera says the average car only drives 29 miles a day, that's not true for fancy new cars, which always get driven more than the older vehicles in the house. At the moment, Aptera is only taking reservations at this time, and has not shipped actual cars as of yet. As such, this video is based only on their promised specs and answers to questions, not on what an actual vehicle can do. While this is a newly reformed company, the original founders are involved. The prior company went bankrupt and never delivered a vehicle. As such, one must be wary of their promises until real results are delivered. But so far, Aptura has done a great job in convincing us that this time they will deliver on their promises, so I can applaud that. But what do you think? Is the Aptura SEV really green? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this coming in the future. And if you feel touched to contribute to Lewin's treatment, don't forget to check out the GoFundMe page in the description below. Thank you, and thanks for watching.